other host, what, we'll look call at him, you doing the same thing. is uh, Mr. Shane Hazel. Good afternoon or morning or whenever this greets you, hopefully on a Friday. I hope you're having a great week, and uh, this is going to put a nice bow on it for you. We have had a great day already. We, uh, As you guys know, we, we had a wonderful interview on uh, Monday for you guys. I'm... S- we're, we're we're obviously continuing in our day here, so we made a new friend. A l- little little residual, uh, you know, I didn't say just glee and, and and overall happiness. I I think that's probably that thing right next to everything else there, rookie. For those who are not watching the video, <laughs> I put my phone next to the cables, which always makes that noise. Rookie, my rookie, bad. rookie mistakes. But, but as Shane was explaining, we made a new friend. His name is Scott Horton. Yeah, and uh, we're we're besties. Well, you know, and I, I think um, you guys are going to see some things that we've been talking about a little bit off air. After that, uh, man, we're going to be we're going to be making some pushes here. Uh, twenty twenty is going to get exciting. I, I, I mean, I'm I'm excited after talking about this uh, to to grab some, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, really big, not only podcasts but people who are in the liberty movement, kind of getting this fire together again. If you you know, if, if you feel. Like uh, you want to go out and make a difference right now? Like I'm gonna tell you right now, go join the LP. We, I, there's, there's stuff happening. We need you. We got, we got to have you. We got to have a spark. And the thing is, is we can take over uh, the LP with, uh, with just the audiences that listen to programs like this. I mean, this, it's, it's unbelievable the potential that we have in front of us right now. And I believe Scott Horton's going to be part of that. I believe uh, he can uh, probably get some other really big names in part of this as well. Well, as I know we... that Dave Smith is already on board with that. He's made the argument yeah. multiple times. And uh, I will embody the the libertarian idea in saying that uh, I won't tell you what to do, but it's a damn good idea. And we're uh, we're definitely, yeah, I'm not saying you got to do it. What I'm, I'm doing is recruiting. I'm encouraging. I know. I am telling you right now that something is different right now. And... That those little those little embers are having a lot of life blown right back into them, and I'll tell you, I can't help but get, be somewhat optimistic about adding to that fire. You know what else has a lot of life? Tell me. Our review section. Yes, Man, I forgot the freaking word. A review lot. section. Yeah, I mean we've we're uh, above a hundred. Yeah, we've got hundred and two reviews. Thank you guys next, so much next for step doing is to that. Go over nine thousand. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, but first, you do you get that that reference? <laughs> no, nine thousand. What's the nine thousand? It's a Dragon Ball Z reference. Oh, boy. and this, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the first times Shane doesn't get a pop culture reference. That's because Dragon Ball Z isn't pop culture. <laughs> sure, it is. I actually have never seen a Dragon Ball Z episode, but what? I know this because it's part of the internet, like oh. meme memed them. Yeah, I, I, so. I, I, I used to have a guy that used to live with me, uh, my buddy Brian in the Marine Corps. Man, he was a big Dragon Ball Z guy. Love that stuff. I was like. I don't get it. I, there, there's some kind of fight at one point, and his power does more than nine thousand damage. Yeah, that, I think that's, that's it. It's crazy. So. Nine thousand. I probably got all that wrong. <laughs> I saw one meme like, "Oh, cool, people are using that." I'm just going to repeat it. I, 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 I butchered my own, uh, my own. Uh, I guess what we call it a uh, reference point. Reference. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. But you know who didn't blow it? Uh, Logan Wentworth. Man, what a review! Is that the Logan? I think it might be Logan Wentworth. He's from uh, he's from South Dakota. You know Logan oh, from no. South Dakota? I thought he was the one from Georgia that we met at Yale. Well, uh, this uh, this review that he gave five stars. I'm going to read it. Uh, Logan says, "I'm a 24 <laughs> I'm a 24 year old male from South Dakota and have never followed politics. I choose not to vote. Uh, I chose not to vote in the last election because my vote didn't truly matter." Quotes, but. With another election fast approaching, I feel at least a sense of needing to understand the political landscape of this country now that I'm full, I'm a full-fledged adult. Left and right-wing politics left me with nothing but a bitter taste. But the libertarian movement, and more so Banks and Shane, have made me realize there are people that hold up similar values as I that don't perfectly align with the two-party system. They make current issues that would otherwise be far over my head simple and easy to process, understand, and ultimately develop my own viewpoint on. Since I found this podcast several months ago, I haven't been able to stop listening and telling others about it. Thank you for all you do, Banks and Shane. You are true warriors for liberty. Logan. Cool. That one, that one was really man, awesome. so good. From again, it's it's the I appreciate the people who I know who put reviews. 
because I've met them in politics. Some yeah. are my friends. But the random people, I n- nothing like I just don't know you, Logan. But um, not yet. It is it is heartwarming to see like the liberty movement grow and to potentially have been a part of that happening. I'm uh, and you, just encouraging and 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 connecting the dots, right? Yeah. There's so many people out there who I still contend the vast majority of people, and I, I will always contend, agree on the vast majority of important things, right. which is like you you don't want to be like attacked. During the day, usually you want your day to go peacefully and be able to do the things that you want to do. And most do. people don't want to attack anybody either, right? I mean, that's that, that's, that's really the that's case. That's why it works, man. Yeah, it's crazy. So, I I don't know, man. The, the, the whole thing, you know, just to be able to read this kind of stuff and now be a part of this and to, to be adopted by the Liberty crowd, man. It, it is, uh, it's been a ton of work. It is, you know, it's... It's, it's not something that you think about. It's just something you do when you love it. And I encourage you, you got, if you're out there and you're thinking about getting involved, start, put it, put a foot out there, start taking a step. And, you know, before you know it, you'll be running your own damn podcast, talking to people like <laughs> Scott Horton and, and everybody else in this movement that's trying to make sure that uh, you do get to live your life in nonviolence and, 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 you know, without being persuaded by force to do, you know, really dumb things. So I don't know. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super, super excited, but banks, uh, we've got a full show. I mean, we do, we're going to talk about cannabis. We're going to do a little update on the impeachment stuff. Very I, little. I listened to all yeah. like 10, 12 hours of it. Oh. Uh, I was working while I was doing that. So it wasn't as horrific, but yeah, and then we're going to talk about Hong Kong. I have no idea what's happening there. I did not see the updates. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting crazy. And then if we've got any other time, uh, a, a little company called Disney did something <laughs> this past week around, and uh, definitely worth talking about. Maybe a little bit if we got some time. Cool. Yeah, ready cannabis. To get yeah, into it? surprise me with so cannabis. I gave Shane half of the uh, of the story first um, because I knew it would make him salivate with anger. Is that is, is that a thing? Anger. Salivating with anger? Yeah, I you know I can get so yeah. angry that sure spit so, falls out of my mouth. It's a it's a news article um, about the UK and somebody came up with a calculation of how much time, specifically time, was wasted oh. with cannabis enforcement. Yeah. So the UK is a much smaller place than the United States. Twenty three million, twenty five million. I thought it was. I was going to say fifty a show. I have no freaking idea. Maybe, well, all right, point. it's it, it's somewhere. Yes. Like, all right. I thought it was just a little smaller in France, and France is 70. Okay. So who knows? Um, But they made a calculation of how many man hours were wasted in their terms um, on enforcement of specifically cannabis. So not drugs in general, like cannabis enforcement. Yeah. And uh, the number goes over 1 million. So 1 million hours of police time in the UK is wasted, um, which I think is the appropriate word, on enforcing cannabis laws. So any like possession, distribution, whatever it is. Um, it comes out to a few other totals. It's actually one million forty-four thousand, um, but apparently, it shows a total of eighty-seven thousand two hundred forty-seven police caseloads. And if you divide that by the number of no, number of hours that was necessary, um, they spent thirty-one million pounds, and that's about uh, twenty-three hundred pounds per case. So this means, since most of those cases are simple possession of small amounts, yeah. That means that your average, whatever, stoner or recreational uh, cannabis user or medical cannabis user who's caught in the UK, the average person, think about the average person you know. Somebody somebody who, who, who's who uses a, who's cannabis. In, somebody who's in the plant business. Then they are unwittingly and under duress part of taking 2,300 pounds, which is like $3,800 from okay. other people yeah. to waste other people's time. Yeah to ruin everybody's lives that's crazy. like that is like the downhill effect of of, of what well, this creates and you're saying that's just law enforcement time right that's just police time just on cannabis just in the uk so now multiply that across everybody that it touches and and, and a million hours is not an easy thing to translate right for you guys that are driving down the road right now out there going to work that need to be pissed off first thing in the morning <laughs> i'm gonna make this way worse for you do you know what a million hours is converted to years? Uh, did you make the calculation? I did. Uh, I don't even know. It's over 114 head. years. That's 114 years. That's a million hours. 114 years worth of time. And it's not just neutral time. 
No. It's time that destroys people's lives well, and takes people's money. And also is only accounting for the police lives that is wasted on this. Think about the time that goes into somebody's life that has to deal with these court cases now. You know, everybody's time that is touched by a single case, a prosecutor, a defense, a jury, a judge, all the people that pay their salaries. Talk about that ripple that turns into a tidal wave. What a colossal, oh, unimaginable wave of waste. 114 years and one year is is wasted just on this one aspect alone of of a plant that grows naturally out there across basically every climate minus the Arctic. Man, what a weird thing, man. It is. So now I've got the good news. All right. And it actually gets exponentially better because of what Google does sometimes when you search things. Okay. So um, the article has more to it. It talks about how this was um, a study kind of put together put together by the Liberal Democrat Party in the UK. Um, a, it's a platform position that they're pushing. And some of their statements, I mean, it's like the statements. Mm -hmm. we, all, we, we all knew this. But it's nice to hear from, from politicians. Um, one of them is, the current approach is a disaster for young people whose mental and physical health is being harmed by an increasingly potent product. There are no age checks, no controls, or quality of strength. Uh, skunk is widespread, and the only idea ID you need to buy it is a 12-pound note. Uh, successive governments have ceded total control of a significant public health problem to organized crime. Now, that's that's the interesting part to hear politicians say. We already know it, right? You make something illegal. It goes, um, it goes that, into that, quote, that, the, the free market. That that in well, that it goes into the free kind of manipulated market because the the black market would be is the free market. But in this sense, it's fighting against the government, and the increase in value is brought because they take a risk, right? Yeah, and that 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 means that there's more opaqueness, and unfortunately. Oh yeah, no, yeah, you're not you you don't you can't talk about this stuff openly. Hey guys, you know I, I'm really I've got I really got this problem. I can't sleep at night. Uh, I'm wondering, you know what you know what there is out there in terms of cannabis, you know that that can help me, right? Like that, let's just take that for instance. Simple, simple question that anybody should be able to answer, right? You got a plant that grows on Earth. One is gonna, you know, kind of get your get your psychological uh, juices flowing. You're gonna, you know, if you know about cannabis, the sativas are are more of the psycho uh, psychedelic type strains, and then you have your indicas, which are more of your strains that are gonna put you to sleep, right? And so, anyway, one of these things where you should be able to ask the question to, you know, people who grow cannabis, who, uh, you know take it and they distill it into some of the more concentrated oils or gummies or whatever forms that are out there. You sit there and say, Hey man, uh, what should I do to, to sleep? And he's like, man, try, you know, what you should do. And coming from a place of knowledge is you, what you should do is maybe try this strain right here specifically. And it'll, it'll wind you down at the end of the day. You should definitely not be doing anything in terms of operating vehicles or, you know, anything that requires a lot of attention where you've got machine parts or somebody's going to get hurt. You need to sit on the couch and watch something funny, maybe pull up a bag of Doritos with you. And that's it, man. That's the, that's the last thing you're Some doing today. ice cream. Right. Instead, what is it? You can't talk about it openly because you got fear of reprisal from some. No, it, instead of being able to go like on a on a internet forum, yeah, and have a lot of opinions and have consensus, like we have about like cell phones and anything. Like you go on Amazon and it's basically an accumulation of opinions of all the buyers, and, and you can know like what whatever they're selling. You you have enough opinions to make an informed how decision. You, how 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 often you buy anything that's like a star on Amazon? Never. Never. And so, but instead. You have to go into like the dark alley or behind the Taco Bell, where, right. wherever it is, and both parties involved are under threat of fear, right? Yeah. Like that that that's the threat they're they're feeling, and they have to hide. And one party, and and there's little recourse because if one party does something wrong, you can't really like call the cops, which is what we have today. I'm not saying that's the best solution. There's no recourse. And, and, and say somebody hurt me because, well, then you'll be in trouble as well because you've done something wrong. Illegal. Illegal. So I like seeing politicians acknowledge that 
it gives way for more crime. That, that's what they're doing. You never hear this. this. This does not happen even in the states where we've got a lot of, country, of countries. Huh? That's a funny lapse. Mm-hmm. A lot of states. A lot of countries. Um, that have uh, countries, you know, same difference. Same thing. Can't wait to tell their countries again. A lot of states that have legalized it to different degrees, mm-hmm. they don't really talk about this. They don't accept it because we still have this nationwide war on drugs and the evil cartels that all that all that are all brown of course That's <laughs> not true by the way the whitest and most well-funded ones are actually americans who are called the ca yeah and um, D- and dea don't don't forget those bastards over well, there well those guys are not like the cartel itself they're like the no, no, the, they're like the mafia that protects the cartel. You see, well, that and, and they and, offer protection, and, and they help understand where they're coming in and going out and, and transporting as well. I mean, an, a, an insurance industry would want to help their customers. That's right. So <laughs> uh, avoid risk. I wish these. Uh, I wish these same people on the what is it the the, the progressive left or whatever the hell it is in in the, the UK would the ap- liberal Democrats like yeah, themselves would apply that to everything that government touches over there. Hey. I, Hey, they they haven't even gone the full way. They're like, we need to regulate it because it's because it's dangerous. If not, but this is but an a major step in the in the right direction to acknowledge. They have another quote: "Liberal Democrats will take back control from the criminal gangs and protect young people, et cetera, et cetera." Then yeah. they go into regulation and so forth. That's too bad. But the good news continues, and the reason I found out about this is because I didn't know exactly what the Liberal Democrat Party was in the UK. So I put Liberal Democrat um, Cannabis. Um, legalize or something okay. in, into Google, and I saw some, some. I saw a few things, but one headline caught my eye, and it's the Global Commission on Drugs. Um, that was a, it's an organization that was created in 2009. Usually, global things like this that are paid for by either the UN or, yeah. or the IMF or some international group that the that U.S. steals taxpayer. money from the people who steal money from you. Yeah, the U.S. taxpayer. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's kind of removed. It's, re- it's removed a lot of times. <laughs> you know, I was, I was seeing that earlier this week, man, is somebody was uh, like, oh, man, we just passed like $23 trillion and a half dollars or something. Does it, it or somebody it was, I had posted something about the, the deficit growing even faster under Trump. And they're like, man, it's weird. It's like, it just seems like it's getting faster and faster. And, you know, I, it's not like a light bulb went off, but it was one of those things where I said it out loud for the first time. I was like, yeah, man, uh, $4 trillion is the, is the going price of empire every year now. That's what that is. We don't even talk about that. We don't, we don't talk about the American empire as if it's a bad thing, right? Like look at star Wars. I mean, I'm a star Wars dork. I'm talking about about it later in Disney plus if we get to, but empire, we are everywhere. Our ships are everywhere. Our troops are everywhere. We've got everything going on all over the world. It costs us $4 trillion a year to control everything that we're controlling right now, which is obviously not sustainable, right? And these guys are making the unwitting uh, admission here, like a whole lot of other people out there in, in government and, and you know the guys that are status bootlickers and all that other kind of stuff that, oh my God, this is what happens when you do this kind of stuff. And you're like, oh boy, you know, like I see, I see a target rich environment to sit there and say, come here, let me, let me tell you something. Not only does it do that there, but it does it over here as well. Your healthcare systems, your, your schools, your, you name it, everything these are you touch. The, these are the inevitable, inevitable steps that people who come to the Liberty movement and like we've evolved on some things, um, yeah. Like I, I, I say often the last thing that I really like a major thing I evolved on was IP. Like I used to want to be an inventor when I was a kid Yeah. and like have patents because it sounded cool. But to get back to this, this global uh, commission on drugs, the headline is Glo- global commission on drugs wants to legalize all drugs, yeah. all drugs, not, not, not just cannabis. All of them. And I'm like, sounds, sounds like an evil group. I know I'm making assumptions. I don't know who started this group or anything like that. But uh, they have a new global um, report on drugs, and I read like maybe a quarter of it and mm-hmm. watched maybe like half of this video. That's I'll link the the report and and the video if you have time. I probably won't won't go through the rest of it, but I'm very surprised when a group like this, which is usually pro more government, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that is what the globalists 
push for. They think they can solve all the, all the problems and they are very, very, very far away from the idea that, well, people are the, like, individuals know best how to run their own individual life. Yep. And this yet, because of the consequences, because the cartels and the free market works is so powerful, I guess, I guess they had to come to these conclusions. Mm -hmm. And while it's not perfect and they want to go to regulation, it is quite amazing when top, like some liberty ideas come from the top down angle because they usually, they don't come from there. And so they came up with, with this report. Uh, the chairman of the group is the former president of Switzerland, um, has some really good comments. Uh, he starts out the kind of summary of the advancing drug policy reform and new approach to de decriminalization report um, by saying... After years of denouncing the dramatic effects of prohibition and the criminalization of people that do no harm but use drugs on the society as a whole, it is time to highlight the benefits of a well-designed and well-implemented people-centered drug policy. Now, that's like some politician jargon in there yeah, about yeah. people-centered and well-implemented and well-designed means that they get to have control. But he still acknowledges the problem of prohibition using the word even which is a i mean that has a lot of history to it where people can like making the connection is something i try to do to people all the time like do you remember well not remember do you have you read about the 1920s have you read about history why would cannabis be so different than i don't know like the beer that i'm drinking right now yeah which is awesome by the way it's by wild leap <laughs> shameless plug so good it's real good if, stuff. if they could sponsor i would love a bunch of free Vacanza. It's yeah. a tangerine hibiscus goose. Is that a type I, of beer? Yeah, I think it's. I, I don't know. I, I told Banks it was a bit sour. You know, kind of like a sour beer, which you like a lot. I love. I, I bought those yesterday, sight unseen, and I was like, you know what, Banks is gonna like that tomorrow with maraschino cherries and Himalayan sea salt, and you can taste the after sea taste salt. of sea salt. That's yeah, good. Two, I usually don't go off on weird tangents two, like that. Two but. plugs in two weeks, man. I tell you what, we're we're working our way towards something here. <laughs> And uh, here are the five, I hope you can follow, I don't mean to be so um, distracted, but here are the five policy recommendations they make um, right. that go directly to the UN and then tr tr it trickles down, which is a more effective trickle down, sadly, than people being like, hey, why don't you just leave us alone in our houses to do what we want to do? Um, so they say that states must abolish the death penalty for all drug-related offenses. This is not about cannabis again. This is all drugs. Everybody. States must end all penalties, both criminal and civil, for drug possession, for personal use, and the cultivation of drugs for personal consumption. So this is the UN? This is, well, it's partly funded by the UN. It's called the Global Commission on Drug Policy. I don't have all the wait, details. Wait, so they're, they're using the word states as in states as in countries? They are. Cool. It's, um... In Boy, a, we're, 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 we're knocking two... So in a, in a more European way, which, like, English as the official language is not necessarily like American English. But think about what they're you doing would too, use right? You states more in that sense. Well, sure you would, but even... even Like in, in French, you say ita. That's how you say a country. There's yeah. not there's not the different words because you'd go directly down to, to region and department. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is... is say there's Like when I say unwittingly a lot of time, this these are this is cool stuff, right? When, when you look at the European Union, they're trying more and more to make sure that it's looked at as a whole and not as individual states, much like what happened here in the United States. They're trying more and more, and they are, even if the countries there don't realize it, they are absolutely like achieving their goal. Yeah. Every country that's in the EU has less and less control over its own sovereignty. Every year, I keep on reading things all the time about how now there's uh, EU-wide like um, e employment laws. Mm -hmm. So across all the countries, there's a certain discrimination stuff, you know, like we have here in the States. Sure. And for somebody who lived in Europe in a country and realized that there were borders, like I, I've been stopped between the, Fran uh, the French and, Sp and Spanish border hundreds of times, maybe. Yeah. They look at your passport and... So sometimes they, they, they look in your car. For somebody who thinks that those were countries, I don't see how they are. There's the same policies. Yeah. France can literally not decide to say, no, you're allowed to discriminate or no, you're allowed to do X, Y, Z without being in conflict with EU law. So I, I don't know what happened at that point. Sure. They're all apparently wittingly becoming enslaved. No, sure. I mean, but, that's the thing is you look at you look at history. I mean, 
you know, states are individual in terms of autonomy and sovereignty, right? So states can make all the decisions, the most important decisions, war, peace, negotiation, foreign commerce, whereas colonies or being part of a, you know, subservient type of conglomeration, confederation or whatever it is that you've signed into, un, you know, unwittingly, uh, you, what they're doing is, is saying, all right, these are states, they were countries, they are, you know, now that you guys all have to do this under, under us in terms of being kind of part of the EU or the UN or, or any other, you know, subsidiary that's funded by Americans. But I, I digress. I just think it's a, a fascinating thing that they're using, you know, the language that they're using in some of these things. It's more because of the etymology of words, sure. I think. But I get I get your point. It's funny, though, that you see two different ways. America, even though there were the colonies before and a few of the a few of our states were independent countries for a little while, Texas, uh, Georgia oh. tried to become independent for like a tiny bit um, and some other states, maybe. Mm -hmm. And Europe, it started with countries, some of countries who like went to war and killed each other. And yet it's the same it's the same result at the end. Like government has done, government only knows how to do one thing. Grow. Just grow. And so in the end, we just both have a national government that controls much more than. Yeah. Than and, and you're all colonies again. What are supposed to be the decentralized parts. Subjects and colonies. And the only part, that, the only reason the decentralized parts are better is because government can be slightly more controlled and slightly closer to the people. That's not necessarily the best solution out there. Um, so number three is states must implement alternatives to punishment for all low-level nonviolent actors in the drug trade. So the vast majority of people. Mm -hmm. um, UN member states must remove the pen penalization of drug possession as a treaty obligation under the international drug control system. I'm not for the UN or so forth, but this is kind of a good thing. And lastly, number five, states must eventually explore regulatory models for all illicit drugs and acknowledge this to be the next logical step in drug policy reform following decriminalization. And you blew it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of my line, Shane, but yeah. So, of course, these are these are government people, okay? We're, we're not sure. going into... No, into, no, no. We got to find a way to tax this stuff. They're probably thinking about money, of course. Of course. Here, Control. they won't talk about it. They're talking about the safety of the children. The next logical step is to let communities deal with their own nonsense. But this is what is so good about logic. Logic finds them, because yeah. a lot of this is logical, even though they've messed up the conclusion. Logic finds them, even though they are so far from logic. Mm -hmm. Like, they're saying that the lo next logical step, which is not logical whatsoever, it's actually, we could give a hundred examples of why regulation is just going to make the product worse, the product more expensive, um, the black market still exists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Um, and com com competition being low, and and that would lead to an inferior product as well with, um, I mean, just like it never ends. But the reason why the truth and exposing the truth, like um, our friend Scott Horton, he's like, it's just, just about the truth. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so cool to be on that side. Like, I don't know why more people aren't on that side. It's much easier. Oh, it's so easy. I don't have to remember much oh. in my head besides like some basic principles. And if I forget about, uh, are, should we be allowed to to like ingest cannabis hmm just go back to your oh, your yep. basic principle sure enough uh if it doesn't hurt anybody else <laughs> then yeah so um i thought that was interesting i wonder what the um consequences of this will be if it does trickle down there are some case examples the united states in some ways in some states you've got portugal that we've mentioned before mm -hmm. you've got uh uruguay um that we've mentioned before um uh Mexico and Colombia. Spain was kind of fairly loose for a while, right? Portugal. I don't remember Spain. Portugal, uh, absolutely. Yeah. They've been on a, like a two-decade experiment. Sure. Um, they didn't go... The The best one that I know of has been Uruguay, where they decriminalized it completely and didn't add like any other like parameters. And in Portugal, you have the parameters of um, you still have a civil penalty and you have like these treatment things and so forth. A tax. Um, so it's what it is. I hope this goes in, in the right direction. The uh, report is interesting, though tedious. The video is quite interesting. I just didn't get time to finish it. I do want to play one clip uh, from a gentleman. His name is Michelle Kazatskin. 
I think is how you pronounce it. He's per- French. Perfect. Nailed it. Um, he was the director of Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. It's one of those UN-funded sure. things. and uh, You mean U.S. taxpayer? <laughs> well, US, what, is what is it? The U.S. U.S. cattle. Is it, is it 40%? US they they fund of that? I don't know. 60%? It, it, oh, I think it's, it's at least crazy. crazy, yeah. But uh, here is a, um, a little clip from him. And uh, again, same. I'm just repeating myself. It's cool to see people at that level, which I usually don't agree with them, um, making sense. Millions of people across the world use drugs without causing any harm to others. So Most. criminalizing them is unnecessary, it's harmful, it's not proportional, and to us, it undermines the right to privacy and the right to human uh, dignity and personal autonomy. So so he didn't have to go all the way there. Like this person who is working within the globalist like framework. Yeah talked about privacy person like privacy per- is one that was like it's far-fetched to talk about like they don't talk about privacy not anymore boy no it's even one that's a little like oh re- 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 relating cannabis to privacy meaning you're allowed to to not have people know what what you do like that that's a something i might forget he p- talks about personal autonomy mm-hmm. he talks about por- proportionality and dignity. dignity what i'm just i don't know who this fellow the is state respects personal dignity but I appreciate that because of the consequences, those consequences have actions. Yeah. They can be bad. And bad actions don't necessarily have bad consequences. These bad like consequences and bad things that have happened because of them have had a good consequence. And at least this one individual is saying a lot of truth. And a lot of truth coming from that area is quite interesting. Oh, and it's, it's oh, the, the desert of where truth does not lie. Oh, these type of globalist panels are usually not only boring, and it's still kind of low-paced boring, but the subject matter is is interesting. But they're so far from any of any privacy, autonomy, and dignity, the ideas that they spew sometimes are just scary. I'm talking like 1984 is like a kid's novel. Oh, sure. Point. Yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, so, it's, I mean, you're talking, you're talking downright like experimentation on people at this at that point, you know, and that's that's the problem. Is, I mean, this is the area where the where the Kissingers and the Ma- Madeline Albrights are so far removed from people that they just view them as these globs of uh, five hundred thousand here. Well, that's that's worth it because to them it's just a small infinite yeah. proportion to their larger goal. And to view things on an individual basis, he says hundreds of millions of people every day. Use drugs and hurt nobody. Most of the world, right? It's what it was seven seven billion people. Most of the world uses drugs and hurts nobody. Nobody. So in they're categorizing drugs as illegal drugs, so they wouldn't say most of the population use drugs. But yes, we know yeah, that they, the vast of, of course that, of course they can't include all drugs. <laughs> That'd be silly, Shane. Ha ha ha! You're you're crazy. No man, like that's the thing. Is like coffee's a drug. I mean, everybody gets up and slams coffee. They throw it right in their face. I didn't say everybody. Most damn everybody. God, <laughs> Banks is wearing off on me. Everybody fires up that pot in the morning, the coffee pot, and then they <laughs> then, then they throw it down their gullet, and they get going. Maybe two. Oh, oh man, that guy's a serial user of coffee. Next thing he does is he loads up at, at Chick Fil A on fast food. Oh man, we can't have we can't do that. I mean, overeating that's that that should be regulated, shouldn't it? I mean, we should control how much you're allowed to eat and everything out there. And then you know, during that meal, maybe they ingest some more caffeine through a sugary beverage. I mean, the drugs are endless. Tea is a drug. Caffeine is a drug. I mean, all of these things that are somewhat acceptable, and then you know, you polish off your day with tons and tons of booze. Oh man, I don't know, man. I. I get so spun up on this kind of stuff, but no, it's 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 very it's nice to hear somebody who's actually on a record somewhere at one of these ridiculous and hopefully dying international type forums. Ugh. Well, funded by government, I don't mind sure. some private things, but yeah. So I will link the video, which is like an hour and a half long, and I will link the um, report, which is very very long. I don't even know how long, but like. It was too long for me to get through, and I usually like that kind of stuff. Yeah, because I like to find the stupid stuff. <laughs> but um, so that is that cannabis, 
cannabis. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's very interesting to me. Yeah, it it brought up something for me this morning uh, when when you started talking about or, or this afternoon. Golly, time passes when you're having fun. Um, I. I watch all kinds of stuff with my kids, mm-hmm. and um, you know, a lot of times we'll watch things where people are either surviving off the land. Oh, he's crazy. He's a prepper. Uh, I just think it's interesting, um, and you know, besides like m- like the show Meat Eater, um, I we tuned into the show this week called Life Below Zero, and so like people who are up near the, or above the Arctic Circle, right? Cool. They, yeah, they're living their life in balance with the land. I mean, they are opportunists. So, I mean, these guys are out like shoot muskrats and trapping and moose or caribou or or whatever but they don't answer to anybody right and i i kind of had this thought like during that time i was like man all you got to do is just be willing to freeze your ass off and move as far north as you could possibly stand while physically being able to make it in this world and you can be free right you can be relatively free mostly right like because seriously i would so unless your desire your innate desire is to live the lifestyle, the off the grid lifestyle yeah. with less technology and so forth, you are still affected by the fact that your tax dollars will be still your money, your tax dollars. Why? That's yeah. I don't. I don't a, know that these misnomer. guys have a whole bunch of any of that though. Will be stolen if you want to own electronics, like all the sure all the things that government affects. Like government makes this laptop more expensive. Right. It makes everything when you do well, yeah when less you, innovative. When you when so you forth. do interact with society, you are going to you know have that burden of government taxation and stuff. But yeah. for the most so part, I I want to I enjoy off the grid. Yeah. But I also enjoy a certain level of technology. There are some things I'm not interested in. Right. I yeah. like I don't like playing Fortnite. <laughs> my my nephew loves it, but like yeah, it's not that like interesting to me. And um, oh, I forgot I wanted to talk about that. Scott, Fortnite. I want to talk about China. Do I need to go get my kids? And, get- <laughs> <laughs> and the gaming, yeah. I kind of actually want to ask them a question later on. Okay. Um, we we can talk about that on, on the next episode. But um, they'll talk your like, ear off about Fortnite. I want to live. I want to live a certain te- technological life, and it's a, it is impossible with the current state of how sure. how much government is, is involved to not have that affect me. My my point is is like these like guys flying don't, cars, man. Yeah, these guys don't even have time for technology for the most part, right? Like they've interacted to the point where they can sustain themselves. They've got the you know the stove and the saw and you know a, a shelter and, and and a means for procuring um you know gain, sustenance sustenance, right? And that's like that's most of the time. The ninety nine percent of their life, that's the way that life is spent up there, doing that kind of thing, free for most anybody or anything. Because let's just face it, nobody wants to be there. You can't even station federal freaking agents out there because they don't want to live out there. Like, eh, no thanks. I don't think I'm going to live out here and harass these people. Also, if I come around some of these people who are living out in the woods, it's a good. There's a good chance that I'm going to be, you know faced with armed resistance because the odds out there, the odds are not in your favor as a fed, right? Like that's the thing. And so you kind of get to this, like, you're like, really? Like you can just move far enough North. And I had this, this idea long ago. Like I, I think I was in England and I was like, yeah, you know, people who were, you know, freer than most were people like the, the British or the Anglo Saxons for a long time, because England is a pretty inhospitable place minus technology. I mean, it is mud and sustenance type living. Like you're scraping by. And if you try to take people, people's stuff from there, mm-hmm. they're going to kill you. They're gonna, they're, there's not going to be like, oh, you know, I need to go take this up with my local legislature or sheriff or something like that. No, you come over here and you try to take my stuff. And I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to mince words. We're going to flat out kill you. And it's weird how much tyranny has spread you know northward because of technology because of the ability to to go you know and live further north comfortably yeah i mean the world is is only a certain size and yeah. we have expanded i'm sure that, that same aspect probably the, those same kind of ideas with the technology being inferior was in the minds of the founding fathers being like you know what if we just go out there at least there'll be like some space. Yeah. Like they'll have to get through this big water body also. before they can like take stuff. Yeah. And then they're like, ugh, they're gotta, over here. I we have to fight going. them. And some of those people are like, hell no, I'm just going to go west. Yeah. I hear there's nobody out there. Yeah. And where there's nobody, I, they can't bother me. <laughs> like that, that's, 
and now the pro- maybe that is what Elon Musk is after is is, is after after all. He's like, if I just go to Mars, <laughs> I'll be left in peace, man. I don't know. I I was just making that observation over time and in 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 latitude. You know the where people who really want to be free are, and I mean, trust me, it is at the edge of where civilization is even possible. Um, yeah. That's 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 what you have to do in, in order to be truly free, minus being just absolutely filthy rich. Um, that's what you got to do. But anyway, I uh, I just thought I'd share that little observation with you. I don't know why, but uh, it's, it's yeah. kind of in my head. But but it's, it is a uh, it is a fair observation. Um, I have some quick observations from something. Is it unfair? I'll try to make a cool fair, fair, unfair. Eh. It's <laughs> the impeachment, guys. I have paid zero attention to this whole thing. So here's why you're lucky. <laughs> There's nothing really new. Right. I find that there is a little bit of interesting. It's the same reason as always. Even if you don't care about politics, politics cares about you. The price of apathy is to be ruled by by evil yeah. men. If you don't know what's going on, it is um, it is at your own detriment. After, I think it's like 11 or 12 hours of impeachment day one and impeachment day two trials or testimonies, I guess, or committee hearings, whatever they're called, mm-hmm. with... Uh, Adam Schiff at the helm, which is, in my opinion, the most interesting part from my experience in politics. Nothing has really changed. You've had uh, quite a few people drug in. You've got the former uh, ambassador. You have the def- the deputy deputy secretary um, to Ukraine. No, for the um, the Defense Department, the State Department. Sorry, and I can't remember all all the names. But basically nothing is happening. It's a, there's a bunch of hearsay that's talked about and both parties are defending what you think they, they defend. You've got different types of Democrats. You've got some Democrats who are actually trying to take anything that they can grab onto, right? It, it, it doesn't matter what it is and bring it into the record and tangentially make the case against Trump. Like the more there is, the more he looks bad. Yeah. Except these tangential things, they have something to do with it, but they're not criminal. Lots of them are just implications of yeah, Trump's like a, a mean guy, a bad guy. We, we, we don't like him. He doesn't do business the way we do. And then there's the other Democrats. And uh, is it Julian Castro, the one who's running for president, the Democrat? Yeah, I think you're. I think you got it. He he was the one that was most most apparent to me. The, sh- the short guy that stands on the on on the box. When, I think that's him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he takes it. He just takes a different approach. He just assumes the matter of fact, and all he does is say things like, "You just can't ignore all the facts. Say that Trump is a criminal." So yeah. there's these two two types of de- Democrats. I at least have a little bit more respect for the ones that are just trying to bring in more evidence. Yeah. Because the other ones are just flowing like it's they're just going with, with the program so much it's just like oh it's my turn to speak I've, I've got five minutes let me cheer lead and just say that orange man bad over and over with with the simplest narrative which is trump committed bribery and oh, extortion man, peach and peach and peach um it's stupid at this point right every I mean, so often they talk about the facts yeah okay there's there's the facts that's the important foundational issues right because Unless you've set a foundation that is worth something, well, they can stacking in, anything on top of it, like oh, well, Trump uh, called me a bad name, or if you, or Trump criticized an ambassador, or whatever it is, doesn't really matter. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't set the paradigm, if you don't build the base of your paradigm, everything else on top of it doesn't matter. It's just it's going to fall apart, which is basically what's happened to the Democrats because they haven't been able to set a good enough paradigm for anything to stick at all but, but the thing is that people accept the paradigm regardless of what it is oh, they, some do they could say uh trump drank uh a, a coke and a pepsi in the same day it what? shows that he's a hypocrite outrageous whatever it is and impeach him and so every so often you'll have like them talking about found, found foundational issues yeah and i'm just like oh okay seems like this whole thing should be stopped and I'll just give you one that I think is funny. This is the official uh, complaint from the um, whistleblower Mm -hmm. that was read into the record at some point, I think. And um, he says it was, 
it was not a direct, I was not, sorry, I was not a direct witness to most of the events described. However, I found my colleagues' accounts of these events to be credible because, in almost all cases, multiple officials recounted fact patterns that were consistent with one another. In addition, a variety of information consistent with these private accounts has been reported publicly. Yeah. And all the things that have to do with the foundation of, of the case, right? Like who heard what and what people were saying are all, it, it's hearsay. Every single one of them. Hearsay is a legal term, people. It is. They are not bound by a legal term. Impeachment, as I said, if they yeah. wanted to impeach Trump and their argument all day during these committee hearings were, we don't like Trump's hair. And then they took a vote and everybody voted for it. That's impeachment. It might sound silly, but that's how silly our system is sometimes. That's that's what it's okay. gotten to. Yeah. It, it, if if the majority of people wanted that, or the majority of the representatives and they represent the people, to if, there was degree, a, if there was enough public outrage, yeah. then then people would just accept that because that's how power works there, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is crazy. Apparently, not enough because all all these people accept it. It's just as crazy as if they impeach Trump for having yeah. bad hair. I, I have I've stopped wasting my time with this. I uh, had a discussion in one of the congressmen's office up there. Uh, on the hill about a, a month ago and you know he had, he said you know I, I don't know whether I should pay attention to this or I shouldn't pay attention to this and I was like dude are you kidding me why would you pay attention to this you're a smart guy um, I mean you can look at all the, the patents on your wall over there I, you, you're a smart guy you know what's going on they're crying wolf right this is the story of the boy who cried wolf too many times they go hey 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 the wolf is here. The wolf is here. Come help, 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 help. And, you know, obviously the wolf is the, you know, is President Trump doing something to be impeached. And every time it falls flat on his face, there's there's no story here. There's no wolf. And so every time that this happens, it just gets to the further down the road of, dude, that same kid is crying wolf again. There's, I'm not going to watch this. This is, a, this is a waste of time. And I, and he agreed with me, you know, with that, mm -hmm. you know, with that, uh, understanding. He said, yeah, I think you're right. And I said, yeah, you know, that's, that's what this whole thing is. And it's not worth paying attention to and, and not saying don't, don't not understand a little well, bit of it, well, but there, there's a difference between being aware and paying attention. Sure. Yeah. You should still like, if the boy who's crying wolf gets eaten by a wolf, I want to know about it. Right, like I'm going to pay attention, but at the same time, I'm not rushing. I'm not. I'm, oh man! All right, so where's the wolf at? You know, like I don't. I I know it's not there because you got screwed the pooch so many damn times out there that we know this is not not an issue. I think there are bigger things going on in the world. I don't. I mean, I don't need to. I don't need to get into my conspiracy about you know what's really going on with the Democrats and how you know they're gaming this for the 2020 election and trying to like kind of just I don't know, blow this whole thing apart with their you know, kind of last ditch strategy. They just look so damn desperate to me at this point. But they don't look desperate to the people who support them, ah, and that's because the two party kind of, system works quite well. There is. There was. Uh, they've been doing some polling at. Uh, some of these Trump events and take it for what it's worth. But one out of four people who are going to some of these Trump events identify as Democrats, the people who are going in to watch him speak that are going to probably pull the lever for this guy. So to say that it doesn't, you know, like it's all not, I think it's actually having a backfiring type, you know, at, at some point you would go too far. It, it happened during our friend Matt Gertler's campaign. Um, his opponent sent out a flyer yeah. that was just it was it, it was a comparison flyer I, sh I should bring it in one day and, and show you guys but it was a comparison flyer it had the opponent who was an an older gentleman yeah. who had a family and a career he used and to be a this. democrat um we we don't know that for a fact no oh, no that, that that's the one before oh the, okay, okay. This is a different election. sorry i thought you were... um this was his first election not the re-election yeah and um it was a comparison thing on one side the uh, gentleman, his name is Kent. So just to make it simpler, his name is Kent. And it said, Kent has a mortgage. Uh, Matt Gertler never owned a house. Uh, Kent, run a business? Kent <laughs> has kids. Uh, Matt has no ties to the community. Matt is a kid. Um, uh, in, in, in education, it was like uh, Kent, uh, masters, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Matt Gertler went to school. Uh, <laughs> and uh, avid member of fraternity and it was just it was so disgusting yeah and just like pathetic that it it 
That's my point. The word I was using, it uh, backfired yeah. to where we had candidates who supported Kent, yeah. who had Kent signs, who called and were like, hey, we don't know who we're supporting exactly, but I took down my, my sign for, for Kent because like, that's just disgusting. Like, I have I have grandchildren, and, and like when they're 27, maybe they don't have kids or a mortgage yet. It's We're, we're going to go over there and bomb those bastards into liberty. I mean... I hope both sides backfire, um, but... The thing that I did find more interesting, and it's because of my experience in politics, politics is just um, a fight for power, right? Okay. It's well, you're, you're not wrong. It, it's lots of things, but it, but in one sense, it is just a fight for power, and the rules don't really matter. I um like I don't think there really is like law. Like there's not much law. There's natural law, it, and that's it, it. Because politicians ignore it when it suits them, especially when it comes down to their own law so you're talking about like the the house rules and the speaker getting to do xyz and points of order and and proposing legislation and and filibusters and, and so forth and day two was day one already started in the fact that adam schiff is the um chair of this committee and every two seconds he's taking five five minutes of privilege to just make points and those are the rules the problem is he looks the, worried man the rules are not um they're not necessarily fair and they've been well they've they've, they've, they've they've been changed over years and years of one party or another being in power and then the opposing party gets in power it's like man they had a lot of power and they give themselves more power and at this point they can basically do what they want but they at the same time have these traditions to where re reasonable people kind of operate within the traditions right but when they need to flex well, no, they, they operate with, with, within tr the traditions, but when they need to flex power... They change the rules. They just change the rules. Let me tell you about this. Also, back to my conversation with this, this guy up uh, on, on Capitol Hill. We were talking about Rob for a second. Rob uh, Woodall, for those of you guys, the guy that I ran against down here in the George 7th, sits on the rules committee, right? Mm -hmm. And the conversation went something like this. You know, the rules committee is just a rules committee for whoever's in power, Right. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They can adopt a rule one day, and within the same breath, they will change that rule to fit whatever the need is for that party to move on on that topic. Literally, all the time, there's a rule that um, they allow certain bills to be changed in certain ways, right? Yeah. You know, there, there's open legislation closed. So on closed ones, you're, you're, you're not allowed to make amendments. The at at any, any time you try to do that, they'll be like, whoa, what about the rules, dude? And then as soon as they need to... One of the people in power is like, uh, hey, I'd like to uh, to suspend the rules. Like they suspend the rules all the time. All the time. But if you try to like go against what's like, whoa, man. Yeah. Listen, you don't need a. I thought we were living in a civilized society. <laughs> you don't need a committee on rules, right? You got you got a list of rules, and they should be somewhat like a constitution, they, they, somewhat resolute, somewhat un well, unwavering and unchanging. I, I disagree here. Okay, let's. Um, I mean, you, you you know more about this kind of stuff. The than reason I, do I disagree sure. is because we're not. Um, the reason the part of the Constitution is worth anything, um, as we talked about also with Scott Horton, <laughs> he is right, is because it it has a strong tangent or parallel is, is what I mean. It gets with, you closer with natural rights. Yeah, yeah. Here we're already removed into a completely arbitrary system that has some parallels, but this is this is the system that kind of is supposed to apply those parallels. So we're, we're moved into a completely arbitrary environment. Mm -hmm. Within an arbitrary environment, rules are like, they don't have any basis for being intrinsically good or bad. There are some things that are fair and some things that are less fair. Yeah. But if you control that, then you take away power from the Congress, the parliament, the legislative body, and they're supposed to be able to have... <laughs> Well, you know what I mean, right? I know, but they're supposed to be bound by other rules within their own framework. It is supposed to be a fight for power. That's why there were supposed to be multiple powers that were like boy, co competing be between each other. Shouldn't be a fight for liberty, huh? Fight for power. Well, fa it should be, but that's not how it works. No, no, so. it's not. It's weird, right? Like we, the paradigm is all wrong. It's all wrong. And and that's that's kind of what I'm I'm, I'm getting at there, is There just there is no intrinsic way how I, 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 intrinsically good way to make legislation to, to control other people's lives. You can't come no, up with, right. with a good and with, with, yeah. with a 
morally good answer. So I, I agree. With, yeah. So, er, arbitrary. So, so everything down the road from that is just crap anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I, I completely agree. I, I think, you know, uh, and I, this is a question is how <laughs> maybe there's not an answer and maybe I don't want the answer, but it's, it's one of those things. That if, if you've got a body within a body, that's got a resolute constitution, that's extremely hard to change that now has rules that they can change willy nilly whenever the hell they want to change them. Mm-hmm. How does that perception from the outside, how does that perception help that part, that, that whoever that is that's changing the rules with any type of credence from from people looking in? Most people have no freaking idea and, and anything's happening at that level. But some if, you think, if you think people know about federal politics, yeah. like they know like sur- surface level stuff, yeah, yeah. the stuff that's happening, those details, like parliamentary procedure and when you're allowed to do a point of order which we'll get into in a second or Mm -hmm. a point of of personal privilege and uh, when things are germane and and the rules that go with that basically robert's rules there's robert rules mixed in with um i think it's like so congress works based on jefferson rules or some kind of book that is basically it's it's mostly based off of robert's rules with like the legislative stuff mixed in there something, something like that um, like nobody knows about that. And and at the federal level, I know almost nothing. I assume a lot of it is like the state level, but I could be wrong about a lot of it too. Like there's no filibuster rules at the in Georgia at least, so I don't know anything about hmm. that. Interesting. Um there are ways to poke holes in people's yeah. arguments, but okay. no filibuster rules. I got you. I got you, man. So I've got two videos here and I will play both of them back to back. And just so you see kind of what's happening because, and I'll try to explain as best as possible. Again, it's all just a fight for power. One hour time check, by the way. Already? Yeah, Before. buddy. Mr. Chairman, I have a parliamentary inquiry. Um, uh, the gentleman is not recognized. I do want to comment. Uh, and Mr. Allow- Chairman, I have a point of order under HRES 660. The gentleman will state her point of order. Uh, the point of order is, will the chairman continue to prohibit witnesses from answering Republican questions as you've done in closed hearings and as you the did this week that is when not you a proper, interrupted our questions? That is not a proper point of order. The gentleman was, will suspend. Mr. Mr. Speaker, chairman, I have a, I do, Mr. Chairman, I have a, uh, yeah. The gentleman's not recognized. Mr. Chairman, I have a point of order. The gentleman's not recognized. I have a point of order, though. The gentleman's not recognized. I do want to respond. Literally, points of order are something that you have to recognize. You have to. That's that's how part of yeah, yeah. works. You saw when when uh, the woman at first made a point of order, he yeah, he, he acknowledged no. her. Yeah, and then he takes a little gavel and kind of bangs. Oh it. no, he's, she's saying something that I can't have said. And the funny thing Shh, is, when quiet. you're when you're removed from from the why does he hate women? <laughs> the proper way that things supposed to work, like the the polite society. Yeah, you look at this and it, and it looks weird, man. Because the reason that um, what, what what's his name the guy from Ohio that that, that we kind of like Jim Jordan. So Jim Jim Jordan is, is the last one you hear saying yeah, yeah. point of order point of order and he gets frustrated. Listen to this. Allowed the ranking point of to, order. I, gentleman's not recognized. Mr. Chairman, Allowed, there are four transcripts that have not been released. Gentleman is not recognized. Holy ranking cow. member was a. Holy cow! Like you see his face, he is honestly astonished. And the only reason, which is a bad reason, unfortunately, that he's not, I guess you could say, like, doing more. Who's, who's, the, who's the chair right now? Schiff? Is Schiff. that Schiff? Yeah, yeah that's Schiff. Yeah. Is, because, is, is a power play. He knows that if he does too much, Adam Schiff will tell one of the uh, sergeant of arms, who are the parliamentary people, they're basically the police, yeah, inside. to stop him. And the reason he's not continuing is because he doesn't know if that would actually happen or not. And most everything that happens at the Capitol in Atlanta, for example, and in most uh, states, Mm -hmm. is people in fear that that's what's going to happen. A lot of people, I'm I'm, I'm sure, stop themselves before, like, oh, the bad press, and it looks bad, and so forth, and I'm going to be operating this weird, arbitrary, polite society. Um, But it's just power. One party has power. They can tell people to remove you, and that makes you look really, really, really bad. Um, Here's the last example of, of this. Just towards recognized, Mr. Nunes, you are minority I just, counsel. I just recognized under the House Resolution 660, you are not allowed to yield time except to minority counsel. The ranking member You're yielded time gentleman? to another member gentleman? of Congress. No, that is not accurate. You're gagging the. That young is lady accurate. From New York. Ambassador Never. Ivanovich, I want to thank you for being here today. Gentlemen, will suspend. You're not recognized. This is the fifth time you have interrupted members of Congress, newly elected members of Congress. Gentlemen, will suspend. 
Mr. Chair, we, we control the time. Uh, it's been customary of this committee that whoever controls the time uh, can yield to whoever they wish. If we have members of Congress that have a few questions, it seems appropriate that we be able to let Ms. Stefanik uh, ask her question. So here's the Republicans all puzzled that this can happen. Oh, yeah. Dave, David Nunes' face is like going back and forth as he's saying, you're just gagging? Like, this is not how, this, this, this is not how we do things. And the thing is, even when the rules apply, right, mm -hmm. they've got more rules to back it up. And even when those rules back it up, there's always, as, as we said a second ago, these, these exceptions. Whatever rule you need. And most of the time, since 90% of things that pass are supported by 90% of people, it's between 80 and probably 99, that, that, that depends. Mm -hmm. Most of these matters, it doesn't matter. And the Republicans and the Democrats go along with it because both both sides of the establishment um, kind of work 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 together. And it's interesting to see so much opposition. This seems like true opposition. This doesn't seem like the exact theater that it that it usually is because they're fighting for power. Yeah, they're not in cahoots in power at this moment. Yep. That these things that they usually let go and that nobody cares about, no congressman besides maybe the one you were talking to and a few others care mm -hmm. about the the rules that hurt the minority and 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 hurt hurt dissent and and don't allow discussion and and uh they just support the things that stream stream streamline streamline the process and so forth these are coming to bite them back i it, it is it is very funny to see i hope that it is interesting I, from your perspective from my perspective of seeing this happen i think it's glorious it is it's sad at the same time oh, because why though why is it sad for you I, and, I, and I mean, and no, 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 no. I, I, I understand the question. It, it's sad because while they may not be arguing for things I necessarily a, a, agree with, mm -hmm. some of it every so often I do. And I feel like if more people, so the fact that Matt Gertler and before him, Matt Gertler and I were able to look at videos of the late Bobby Franklin who was a state rep in Georgia. The more you see people bucking the system, the less there is a system and the less there is a system in general, the less evil government can do, or government is forced to do more evil, which usually wakes more and more people up. Yeah. Um, these are successful people with, who get into Congress for the most part, mm -hmm. um, in some way or, or, or another. They might be horribly evil people, but very successful financially, or very popular people, um, what, whatever it is. But seeing these people succumb to to the body of government that does all this evil and they're apparently the only ones that can stop it. They're, they're not, but within this framework, yeah. just act in such cowardice. Like I can imagine you up there and this would just never work. You'd be like, uh, stop banging the little stupid gavel thing and stop breaking the rules. You little. Well, and that's the thing. It, Jim Jordan, Jim Jordan. And, and I, I, I've, I've had this thought while we've been talking, Jim Jordan, I'll tell you right now, like that guy's a grappler. Like he he wrestled at Ohio. I think was it Minnesota or Ohio it, it, State or it, Iowa or something. It's he's from Ohio, so it must be. It's probably Ohio. I, 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 he went to scholarship at, anyway. This guy's a collegiate class wrestler, and mm -hmm. I'm not talking like collegiate class, not from the Midwest. The Midwest is home to some of the best grapplers that are out there, man. Jim Jordan probably no different. If he wanted to go like over there and choke out Schiff. <laughs> Probably could happen before the sergeant at arms or the, the, the whoever it is is. Well, is, that would probably be a bad idea because we don't believe in violence. But it is it, 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 it is weird to see people, even if the rules are all decked sure. against them, you have on top of if if you're arguing with, within right, like on if you're on the side of, of morality, you have, and we've already discussed how uh, moral outrage is is the most valuable weapon in, in politics. Yeah. You have all the moral outrage when you're fighting for a good cause. You're on live TV. Stand, don't, don't like try to talk. And and he, to to give him credit, is the one who made the most. Like, yeah, about third thirty times he said, "Really, Hol holy cow, what, and, what's and, going on?" And and then he said, like, "Point of order, point of order," and he starts over again later. So why not make a big deal about it? Yes, and and I think you're. And here here's here's why I asked the question I did because you go, it's kind of sad, right? I look at this as like my kind of pathetic. Maybe my, my brain is going, this is glorious, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Like this is glorious. The, 
it, it's it's fraying and unraveling right in front of us. And usually, where you do have quote unquote bipartisan support, where you know people of the United States are getting fleeced or or just giving it to them harder mm-hmm. than usual, this isn't that unless they're really just taking they're acting to another level. This. This destroys that that reverence, right? And it in an well, expo- no, because inact it's still inaction. It's 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 better than if they were cahoot in in, in in cahoots and and collusion, but it's still inaction in the end. Uh, the government who Adam Schiff is is representing here, he's yeah. he, he's representing the the system, right? It's like if Adam if 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 nobody did did anything and every, and everybody was just quiet that'd be the system winning. In this sense Adam has to he's like hey system says you need to be quiet. But it's, so just be quiet. But it still kind of destroys the fact that there there is some semblance of rule and order. And that is good. I agree. I, you know what I mean? Like there isn't, these guys are making this crap up as they go, whatever. And, and that's what I like about this destroy, dis, you know, destruction right in front of everybody. And the really neat thing about it is, like I said, Jim Jordan can go over there and snap his neck if he wanted to. Right. And I, I, I just think it would be even cooler if Jim Jordan said, uh, the rules you just said, some of them are like whichever ones are like fake are fake yeah. and those other ones that you just invented is just a way for the established to to protect itself and and, and you know it has yeah. n- no moral basis so, and just like drop a mic or something so yeah and so not only is he technically right and 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 has the 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 high ground in terms of not pushing it too far and taking it too far but he also is showing you know you know in, in other cultures i mean you see parliaments erupt in violence like this guy has the means to do it and he's absolutely subdued himself you know and that i i you know i've seen this thing lately you know it's it's not uh you know it's, it's something about you know the people who are out there or a man who's out there that has the potential to do awful, terrible things and violence and everything else who has it under control as a, you know, is a dangerous person. Everybody else is just, you know, somebody, you know, with a, a BS opinion that's out there, right? Like mm-hmm. if, if you can't do those things and you're all talk and then, but you know, I don't know. I just see this whole th- thing. I, it makes, it puts a smile on my face because I'm like, cool. Schiff is exposing exactly who they are and what they're doing. Jim Jordan over here is showing restraint. I'm not, it's not my reverence for Jim Jordan or no, get, anybody it, else. It's just, I, I like seeing this disharmony, this, I don't know. It's definitely better than usual. Usually. Yeah. And this is why the problem they're having this problem. Usually they just, the tradition continues and they talk to each other politely and they they see time and then when it's time to take the to take the the votes they just vote and it doesn't like nothing really matters and they're just going along their their usual day it is nice to see their usual day interrupted yeah by, i agree uh, so yeah so that that was about what i think was important about the impeachments nothing has really changed it's all hearsay the um do you think any of this kind of stuff is just wag the dog stuff, man, for the I, public. I don't know what that means. Wag, wag the dog. Uh, wag the dog is a term that's used as, you know, like you know, when when somebody gets in political trouble, you know, there are other things that happen, you know, mysteriously happen, you know, whether it's a school shooting or... Uh, no, I, I think there's... So the um, the witnesses are seem quite genuine, actually. Whether they don't like Trump? <laughs> well, yeah. But... Um, a few of them have said good things about Trump actually within and that's why they seem they seem quite quite genuine they have good actors, they're huh? just I don't think they have necessarily a, a hidden agenda they might dislike Trump but they're very loyal to the system um to the point that their main argument of their value and patriotism is I've worked for under 5 presidents and what I hear when I hear somebody say that is like, oh, so you are the deep state. <laughs> they're the bureaucrats. There he is. <laughs> they're the hobgoblins. And... That's right. No, they're not hobgoblins. They're actually real, right? Oh, yeah. The hobgoblins are the they're fake made ones. They're made up, right? yeah. yeah. Uh, they're the – there's another word I wanted to use, but well, yeah. On, on my point, you know, like – there was there was a there was a, a shooting out in L.A. Uh, at, at a, a high school. I think you know there's there a bow and arrow used. Is that what I saw? No, nah, that's I think that's Hong Kong. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean th- that happened. 
the bigger thing for me that I'm keeping my eye on and not wasting my time with the, the, the boys who cried wolf is what's going on in the economy right now with like the Federal Reserve and the bailout and the fact that they've pumped in over $200 billion from the New York Federal Reserve. Have you, have you heard? Yeah, I heard about that. Golly, I mean... The, I mean, the, this would be a very good example of what, um, is it is it Benjamin Franklin said? He's Is it him? It might be somebody else. I might get this wrong. No, uh, Noam Chomsky, I, I believe it is, where he's like, well, the best strategy to distract people is to let them uh, disagree with like a, this small thing. Yeah. So we're all allowed to disagree about all these details about the impeachment and while other things happen. So that that is possible. Yeah, and, so, and, and, and Ron Paul had a piece out on uh, November 11th uh this time around it's called the mother of all bubbles is it about to pop and it's actually published by the new american man and so you know kind of kind of seeing this and seeing him uh you know weigh in on this like the federal reserve bailout operations have increased its balance sheet uh by over 200 billion dollars since september uh michael pento describes the fed's recent actions in quantitative easing as in quantitative easing on steroids that that, that's a big deal, man. Like the fact that all this BS is going on, we're still like, oh, Trump's going to be impeached. No, he's not. Democrats are crooked. No, the Republicans are crooked. Meanwhile, you've got the Federal Reserve. I mean, the Fed is always the the top of the evil empire. Sure. So, and there's nothing. There's nothing being reported about. There rarely is. I, I mean, know. That, that's so. and that's my. That's, I mean, it's it's going to crash at some point. The thing is that there's been so many examples of them being able to bail themselves out in a temporary fashion. I don't know, man. That I understand why people, why this might, for the little attention it gets, why it might get even less attention. Because it's like, who knows? Like, we keep on reporting that it's going to burst. I think it's still good to pay attention to it. And yeah. to point it out, I'm happy that Ron Paul is focused on that. He probably understands it better than uh, than me, at least. Um, yeah, that, I, I think it's an interesting article, which I'll send to you so you can link in there just so cool. you know people can see it. But uh, I, boy, I, I am so disinterested in, in in impeachment at this point that I just I'm totally trying to find the other stories of what's really going on out there in the world versus this uh, in in general. Um, I I also I mean we, we haven't talked anything about like the, the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing. I'm not I don't want to go talk about it. I think it's interesting the whole like what's her face from where you know she uh, she had that story where it got leaked. What, oh, the uh, Amy the uh, Project Veritas uh, Robach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really interesting stuff. That that thing's not going to die. There's a great meme out there. It's like somebody's going to need to kill this uh, Jeffrey Epstein meme because it's not going to do itself or something. <laughs> And I'm just like the, the public outcry right now on that, along with so many other fronts out there. In, in who was it the other day? I heard a quite um, interesting argument about why Jeffrey Ep Epstein might have actually um, killed himself because he didn't. Well, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. There was these arguments on both sides, yeah. and it was like it, it was a uh, he was looking at the psych the psychological analysis. He's like, hey, like three days before he planned on how to give away all his stuff right yeah. up to this um this asset no that not the asset who's who's the the type of lawyer that does will stuff? estates a state yeah. uh, lawyer that they they didn't even know and who didn't really e even know him like usually when you've given up like those are the type of ac actions you take but also within those those days preceding he was also trying to pay off women who extra women who would come out about things. So it's like sure. all these conflicting It's all messed evidence. up. Right. And the thing is, is who were the first guys on the scene on the island after uh after the stuff went down? The feds? The feds. It was the FBI. The FBI went out. There's there's claims now that the FBI is, you know, or parts of the FBI are you know, you know, part of this child molestation pedophile type ring that's running for all these powerful people the implications uh on prince edward right now are huge i mean just bombshells out there i mean it's not just bombshells it's 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 proof yeah nobody's like, talking about if, if, anything if there was a little cherry at the top it's amy yeah whatever her last name is that i can't pronounce robark robak Ro robak yeah and the fact that like you know, Project Veritas got the story out there again. I mean, and it's great because it's filmed and produced with high quality. You know, like I think it's their it's best their, thing to date. Oh, it's amazing, man! Yeah, the, I mean, um, the 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 body parts, the like fetus body parts for sale was a pretty the fetus body parts. 
Yeah, they they had one like two years ago. Oh, think, yeah, yes. Where where they exposed like the Planned woman Parenthood. Talk, yeah, the the woman talking about buying a Ferrari. Sure, sure. Yeah, and the cost of different yeah fetus body parts and God so forth. protect uh, what's his face uh, over there, Project Veritas. Like these guys are doing some good stuff. The fact that the one girl got fired for for leaking it, and, and now all of her social media has been erased, and you know she's going to be erased by the Clintons pretty soon. Like that's it's it's not dying, man. That's that's it's a really neat thing to see this charge and then to start to see other thing I had, I, I saw something else this week where, you know, somebody was like, man, this whole apparatus for control is coming crashing down. And I also saw, you know, a, a, you know, where they've kind of transferred this, uh, Jeffrey Epstein type thing into, uh, nine 11 now, right? Like where they're showing these, the, the tower seven and tower seven didn't kill itself. I saw that one. It's really to to see this gripping this culture and 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 going viral to a point that so many very powerful people are going absolutely out of their way to ignore and bury or spike for that reason i think it's really cool man and and I, I i'll give know. credit to hillary clinton on one thing like there's so much there about her <laughs> like my favorite was this morning i saw it it's a meme, and it's it's Hillary Clinton back in the day in front of a Christmas tree, and it says, "Decorating a Christmas tree takes a lot of work. Ornaments are like Jeffrey Epstein; they don't just hang themselves, <laughs> yes! you know." And yet, just the other day, I think it's the New York Times, um, she's quoted saying, "There are just so many people uh, pressuring me to run for office." Yeah, many uh, many people. Is that is that the headline? Yeah, many it's, many people um, are pressuring me to Hil run. Hillary Clinton says she's under enormous pressure to run sure, in 2020. Sure, she is. I, I give her some credit for just having no freaking shame. None, man. I'm telling you, her that lizard suit, you know, or that lizard that she's got inside that skin suit or whatever she's got going on, man. Like, I wish the lizard had some humor because I could like, I could respect her if she went on some talk show host or some or talk show host show and wore a t-shirt that with like Jeffrey Epstein yeah. doesn't hang himself or some joke on it. You see, you seen the one where, you know, uh, it was her and Chris Farley sitting on the couch and it's what, you know, it's that bit where like Chris Farley does this thing where, uh, he's like, remember that time? And he's like a five-year-old, right? Like that's how he interviews people. He's like a, he's a five-year-old. He's like, remember that time that you hung Jeffrey Epstein or Jeffrey or Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself or I thought that was Kimmel. No, 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 no. This is another uh, one. This is way back in the day. You, you know who Chris Farley is, right? Oh, oh, it's a picture. It's a meme picture yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah, okay, yeah, I got, yeah. it, I got it. And you're just like, man, this this stuff is not going away anytime soon. I I think it's really cool. I think it's cool that this you know insurrection that's happening all over the world right now. I mean, Chile. Where else is it happening? Shane? Ha Chile, Hong Kong, uh, places all over Europe right now in the Middle East. Like Iraq is, you know, people of Iraq are also rising up, and I'm not talking like. Like your regular uh, 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 Sunnis and Shiites, and, Shiites and, and Kurds over there. I'm talking about like the general pop is just like all you guys, man. It is. It's getting really interesting. So I, what's happening in Hong Kong? You said something was happening. I don't know how I missed it. But. Hong Kong is getting serious, man. Um, and I say that because a lot of this stuff started out in Hong Kong with umbrellas, you know, either they're shielding themselves with umbrellas or they're beating uh, some of these riot cops with umbrellas. Or, yeah, because the know. umbrellas are a symbol for something that happened like a few years ago, right? Is it? Yeah, it is. Um, oh, I hadn't heard that. If, if, if you continue, I'll, I'll, sure. I'll pull that up. So um, this is from uh, the Daily Mail over uh, dailymail.co.uk. Hong Kong protesters use bows and, air and flaming arrows in clashes with police as spiraling violence in the city center enters its third day this is getting this is getting really interesting are we talking about like like lethal bow and arrows yes wow not not, not only that but so you know obviously we go through guerrilla tactics counter guerrilla and tactics all that kind of stuff in in a lot of our training and to see some of what's being implemented in hong kong and chile and iraq and these places you know where people are using whatever they can in mass and, and like they they not only have you know, bow and arrows and flaming arrows and stuff like that. These guys have built catapults. They have done things like, you know, very low, uh, low tech type solutions to disruption where they've taken bricks and super glued them to the roadways. So that there's no, like, you can't just easily navigate and travel them by <laughs> foot or any, it's awesome, man. The fact that they, I mean, overpasses bridges, they've lined them 
with umbrellas and like sheets of plywood and boxes and everything else so that the, the authorities can't map them. They're going everywhere with face masks. So there's, there's no facial, uh, facial recognition. They are taking down drones with lasers. Groups and groups of lasers out there where everybody's got these lasers and it looks like a rave. I mean, and the thing is, you see it from space because they captured the video, or I should say space. You see it from the airborne platform because they captured this drone. You know, so at first you see all these lasers that are mostly green pointing up at this drone. And I don't know if it's the heat. I don't know if it's just, you know, messing with the RF communications Mm because everything's bouncing around. But you see this drone that's getting hit by tons and tons of green lasers. And it like, coming. are they holding lasers individually? Yes. Each person? Yes. And so these this drone starts to come down, and then you see almost like this last ditch effort where they give it all the power. It's got, and they just keep hitting it with lasers, and then all of a sudden, whoo, drone's down, man. And you're like, oh wow. And then you see the this other is like vi- Star Wars stuff, it's man. Amazing. Lasers. Yeah. And and then you see from there, and it looks like this giant rave, man. It, I mean, lasers everywhere. And then they all the lasers just go. Whoo, Right, and so it's kind of blinding the camera on there, but mm-hmm. it's green, and you see flashes and 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 all this, just pointing and bringing this thing down. It is awesome, and, and so I I kind of I, I was like, I I think there are things you know there, I've seen people out there, and I had this idea, and so I started reaching out to this one company this week that we were privileged enough to kind of you know, know about a little bit earlier because of one of our good buddies, Mark, who brought it to our attention. This, this company is called Gotenna. And I'm thinking and trying to get with some of their representatives. If you know any of them, I know a few of them uh, through the industry, but I'm trying to uh, possibly set up a GoFundMe site. And I think a pair of these things, these Gotenna things are about 180 bucks, right? So if, if you know, if, if they'd be in on it, what I would love to do is start a fund to start pushing these GoTenna type applications Just, over to these people. So it's an, what it is is it's an RF point-to-point mesh network that government cannot be a part of, cannot hack, cannot do anything. And so as long as you got like line of sight, are there ways to block? There's probably ways to block it. Hard, but there. It, it's ways. it's very sophisticated, right? And that's the thing is, if if we you got, still need to test ours. Yeah, and here's the thing is, I know those. I, I've, I've I've talked to those guys. I know this stuff works. Like, I, th- there's a lot of military application for this, and they probably wouldn't want to be involved. But it doesn't mean you can't start a. It doesn't mean that we like can't buy them and then send them. And I, what I have to do is figure out the ITAR restrictions, which we kind of hit on a little bit. ITAR is the State Department that governs what type of technology can leave the United States for other countries. Sounds bad. Oh, it's terrible. It's oh, and it'll just it. Yeah, it killed your business. Another way of uh, of stifling entry into the market. Uh, yeah, if, if tariffs and that whole but, system that we talked about in episode 140 hadn't done it already, or episode 139 hadn't done it already, yeah. then you've got stuff like that. Even more. But to be able to use your phone off network and not you know to, to not have it hacked and to, to not have any single source of failure, it's kind of like blockchain, right? Mm-hmm. A little bit of blockchain. Yeah, it's and, a little thing, right? It's like the size of, oh, a, sure. of a phone. Yeah, and all you're doing is communicating through wireless, through text message and things like that through it. So you can send out group, you can send out single points, you can send out whatever you need to send out. And as long as there's more than you know a couple in the area, you can communicate off of it. I think it's, I mean, if I can get this thing going, I would love to start funding and sending these little Gotenas over to Hong Kong and other places that need things like this. I wonder what the best way to get it in Hong Kong hands is because I imagine that's what I'm not going to get. Postal service. Yeah. What what I will what I will not give up once we start doing this is how that's going to happen. Um, but uh, if you are you've got time on your hands and you're good at setting up like GoFundMe's or something like that. Uh, please contact me at info at rebellionpod.com. Uh, you can reach me through Facebook as well. And it, it, this is something I'm very serious about because if there's one thing that can aid a guerrilla type fight, it's communication. And where these guys can communicate, they're, they're, you know, they're most likely going to beat these guys. And I think it's absolutely a, just a, an amazing piece of history to, to witness because this, you've got a, it's a tiny island. It's Hong Kong versus China at this point. And they're sitting there going, screw you guys, man. Come and get it. Come and get it. We don't even have guns. We're going to use everything that we can in nature and everything else. It's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Patrick Henry's speech, right? He's like, nature and God will provide. 
we have to be able to stand here. It's just, it's one of the coolest stories in the world for me right now. And I, I you know, I wish them, God, all, all the safety and luck and, and, and whatever they need, uh, to, to, you know, claim their independence from China for God's sakes. I just think my only worry is if it gets big enough to where the governments, cause it's both, there's the local government of Hong Kong, yeah. which will soon be China, hopefully not, but who is in cahoots with China, o- sure. obviously. And, uh, and the Chinese government, I hope that they don't see it as too big to stop. And so the best way to, to prevent it is to infiltrate. Cause that's what happens with, with big. Movements oh, it always often. happens. Yeah. Um, so I wish them the best of luck. The umbrella movement, by the way, started in 2014. It's when these protests started and, uh, it was because people started using them cause they had them as, a, as ways to block pepper spray. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's where it came out. of. Oh, very nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, 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 I I, I would like to do an episode, or maybe on the other show, is uh, have in a, uh, a counter in, in a guerrilla uh, warfare expert and talk about some of these things so that if things ever do decline here in the United States, you have a little bag of tricks ready to go to make sure that you, your community, are as free as as can possibly be. So at any rate, man, uh, we're, we're already at our hour and a half mark. Well, I want to know real fast. Disney Plus? What you were... Shane is like, oh, Star Wars, good, this, and mentions things that... Like, I like Star Wars. I'm yeah. not like a diehard fan like sure. Shane is. So, um, yeah, Disney... And, and, and he's like, I'll tell you on the show, Banks. I'm like... Ugh. Yeah, Disney Plus rolled out Disney Plus. Uh, well, I should say Disney rolled out Disney Plus this last week, right? And... Uh, I guess it was Tuesday that it launched, and they had some. They had a few problems, obviously, because everybody is crashing their servers. But they have an, a new show out there in terms of Star Wars. If you're a Star Wars fan, The Mandalorian. I'll tell you right now, I've watched two shows. Uh, it, it comes out on a weekly basis, so it's not like Netflix where you can just go binge watch everything at one time. But if you're a real no no kidding true Star Wars fan, I think you're gonna get something out of this. It's a, it's a it's a lot better than the Last Jedi for God's sakes. And at any rate, uh, my my kids, uh, especially the boys, are absolutely into this thing a hundred percent. And it feels you know it feels like Star Wars. It's 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 more fun. There's some adventure. There's some you know some I say some nerdiness about it, right? Where they're using names and stuff. Sometimes you're like, I don't know what any of this stuff is, and you've got to turn to other resources that that are out there that comment on it. But anyway, it's got a whole bunch of stuff going on. I thought the one thing that was kind of funny is um, over the the past uh, week, at the same time as this was coming out, is Disney had to go out and warn about quote outdated cultural depictions in some of their earlier films banks what does that mean i got distracted I'm outdated sorry. cultural depictions of, that means of early disney films sjw it's it's offense right like yeah. is there some racist undertones or is there some there are no uh, racist undertones in star wars good lord not star wars this is uh this is just your you know just like everything your dumbo where the crows are black people and and you know I, somebody <laughs> is it you who taught me that the other day big size is, is it you who taught me that the other day What's or that? somebody else that apparently dumbo the crows are supposed to represent black people sure or something. yeah like i never realized so. I didn't either, man. Uh, I had to be told, you know, it's, but that's what somebody, you know, uh, it, it was voiced by what would you typically associate, I guess, back in the day is. I wouldn't. I would associate them as crows. I watched it when I was a little kid that's and it was I funny. I don't know. Ruined, uh, ruined my stuff. Well, when I see elephants fly, man, I'll tell you. But no, I've uh, it's been pretty, pretty overwhelming uh, response from, I think, most people out there. Um Walt Disney, Disney, and all that kind of stuff, maybe uh, even wrapped up in some of this pedophile crap. Um, but at the same time, uh, I thought it was definitely worth talking about for just a second and bringing to the attention because I also like spreading things that I like, right? Like, I like getting people talking about things that I want to talk about sometimes that are not related to politics. And uh, that's that's where I go sometimes for a little bit of a, a brain dump to de- decompress and hang out with kids and family and just let the imagination wander. Well, I'm ready to do non-political stuff. Before I say that, the reason I sure. got distracted for a second What are you, what are you Googling because, over there? No, Facebook popped up a notification saying that uh, a uh, an ad for Matt Gertler was disapproved. Of course. It's the first one I've ever had on Matt Gertler's account. I am approved. I sent in my ID and a bunch of like proof of residence to Facebook so they'd let me do ads. I do his ads. Yeah. And so I just got pissed for a second. I'm still pissed. 
But uh, I think it's time for some non-political stuff. I hope you have enjoyed the show. If you have, we would love it if you would leave some more reviews. Thank you so much for pushing us over 100. It makes us extremely happy. But we need more. As I said, we're going over 9,000. Yeah, go you out there. You can do that on the podcast app, um, iTunes. They might have changed it now. Or on whatever platform you listen to. We would greatly appreciate it. You can also support us monetarily through Patreon. Uh, our stickers are quite late at this point. The people who are working on the stickers, it just takes time. Are also working on websites and videos. There's and just <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. We apologize, but there will be extra goodies in yeah. there because it has taken so time. So usually it's like one sticker. We've been more generous because that's how we work. Yeah. Um, but there's going to be a bunch of stuff. I hope you like them. But you can do that at patreon.com slash rebellion pod. You can give as little as $3 a month. And it goes a long way to support us. We now have over 30 patrons. And uh, that is very humbling uh, to say the least. And lastly, if you'd like to send us any commentary, things you want us to talk about, information, guests you want us to talk to, you can send that to info at rebellionpod.com or tag us in any social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Al along, yeah, along with that, um, we are on every platform out there. Uh, the Rebellion Pod or Rebellion Pod uh, for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Shane T. Hazel, Banks Wise, F. Banks Wise on Twitter. Uh, and now we are on YouTube. Go out there and subscribe, like the video, share them, spread it. I mean, visual learning and, and connection to the passion and the this the interaction that we have here. Uh, man, I. I don't know. I'm getting, I'm so giddy, Banks, to, to continue to do this, to have more and more people listen, to get more involved. The fact that we're coming up on election season, some crazy stuff is going to happen. It's like Super Bowl year, whatever it is. And uh, I don't know, man. I'm, uh, I'm just humbled to death to be accepted into this movement uh, the way we have been. And I uh, can't wait to, to do the next show. So anyway, this has been your place for peace. Liberty, free markets. We love you. We need you. Peace. Um, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff.